In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to play the chromatic scale. If you already know how to play the chromatic scale, in the later part of the video, I'm gonna share with you some fun and creative ways you may not have thought about to practice them to further build your skills. So why do piano players learn the chromatic scale? Well, firstly, it's one of the fundamentals of piano playing. It's a very good technical exercise, which means it's good for warm-ups. It's also used in real music. So for example, the very famous flight of the bumblebee is based almost completely on the chromatic scale. So for the beginner, let's learn what the chromatic scale is and how to play with the right fingerings. Let's start with C today. Now, most people probably already know how to play, let's say the C major scale. To play the chromatic scale is where you're gonna play C to the higher C and back down to C, but this time you're gonna play all the possible notes, including all the black notes. So it's like this. This means your fingers need to change completely, okay? Because the whole setup is quite different. So here are the fingerings, okay? Every time you go to a black note, you always use your three. So for example, like this, you would do the first three notes as one, three, one, three, one. Try that. After doing this one, we run into a problem here where the next note is not a black note. This is a white note, okay? so. We can't really use the three here, the one, three, one, three, one technique. If we use the three here, it sort of stuffs up the next upcoming notes. So what you want to do here for the F is a two. So one, three, one, three, one, two. And then you'll find that it very nicely fits the next one, three, one, three, one, three, one pattern. Two here for the C. As you come down in the exactly the same way as you went up. Let's have a look at right hand again. One, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two. Come down exactly the same way. Let's now have a look at the left hand. The left hand is mostly the same. It, there just is a very, very slight difference. Okay, so the principle of the one, three, one, three, one, three, is the same as well. So we start from C. One, three, one, three. But this time, because your left hand is a mirror image of your right, it's not entirely the same as your right. It's a sort of flipped image of your right. So there are some implications for that. This is where you're gonna do one, three, one, three, two. So it fits well that your thumb lands on the F for you to continue your one, three, one, three movement. So one, three, So the difference with the right and left hand, it's always where there are these kind of two white notes between E and F and between B and C. So left hand, just show you that one more time. Two. Two. Congrats on learning the fingerings for chromatic scales on the piano. Now, chromatic scales on the piano, the good news is that no matter what note you start on, the fingering is always the same. So for example, let's say F sharp for right hand is always going to be a three. As we discussed before early in the video, black notes are always threes. So whether you're starting on C, for example, or you're starting on, let's say F sharp, it's always the same finger, number three, on the F sharp. This is different to your traditional major and minor scales where sometimes notes can have different fingerings depending on the scale. So for example, if you play a C major scale, the fingering that you use for G is two. But then when you play, let's say a G major scale, obviously you don't use two for the G, you start with the one. In chromatic scales, good news, it's always going to be number one for G.
Now that we've learned the fingerings, let's look at some creative ways to practice them to not just only have fun, but also to kind of build our piano skills. Method one I wanna share with you is contrary motion. Now this one is where you're gonna start on very specifically the note D, okay? And I'll share with you why D in a second, but you're gonna do this. So you put both your thumbs on the D and you're gonna venture out like this. The reason we pick D is because when you start on D, it creates a perfect symmetrical mirror image for both hands. So one, three, one, two, three, one, three, and so on and so forth. And come back. Now this is not gonna be the case if you start on, on any other note. Now for the intermediate and advanced player, you probably could start on another note, let's say G. sort of a nice symmetrical mirror image of each other. Whereas if you start on D, you would get a mirror image. Try it. Method two is a similar motion. So this is where you can pick really any note to start, but you're gonna go up and down in this way. What my students often find is the similar motion I just played is actually a little bit harder than the contrary motion before. In method one, contrary motion, it was a perfect mirror image, so you could just kind of follow the same fingerings with both hands. But this time, when you're going up in a similar motion, they're not entirely the same finger. So here, let's say on the E, my left hand is playing two and my right hand's playing one. So definitely a little bit more thinking for this one. Method number three for chromatic scales is to play minor thirds. This is where you're gonna have left hand start on the C, right hand start on the E flat. Okay, so C to the E flat, it creates a minor third interval. And you're gonna play like this. I love this one. This is probably my favorite one out of the seven I'm gonna share with you today. It's a real brain teaser because you're starting on different spots. It's a very, very nice coordination challenge. Okay, moving on to method number four. This is where you're gonna do another kind of thirds. You're gonna do major thirds this time. It's where your left hand is gonna start on C and right hand is gonna start on E rather than E flat. Really, really fun coordination challenge too. Please try it. Okay, method number five. We're gonna do now a slightly further interval. We're gonna do a minor six. This is where your left hand is gonna play C. And right hand, you're gonna start on A flat. One more time. Awesome, moving on to method number six, we're gonna play major sixths. Okay, so instead of A flat, you're gonna play A for the right hand, left hand is still staying on C. Last but not least, the seventh creative way to practice your chromatic scales would be octaves. So let's say we just start on C. For octaves, depending on your hand size, you can play the black notes with either a four or a five. So I'll show you both ways. I personally use a four. This is where I do this. All white notes I'll use five and black notes I'll use four. You can also use five for all white and black notes. It works equally as well. We've come to the end of this chromatic scales tutorial. Let me know which of these different variations of chromatic scales you found easy or hard. Let me know in the comments as well if there's anything piano related you wanna learn next. Catch you in the next tutorial.